Good morning. My sister has gone back to the States, unfortunately. Such a quick, great trip. But now we are getting ready for our next set of house guests. Family and friends that are coming for Cateau Juillet or the 14th of July, which is the big national holiday here. So it's usually a big long weekend. People start their vacation around this time and we're gonna throw together a little party. <laughs> so for this party, my husband wanted it to be really simple. He didn't wanna do a whole big sit down dinner, wanting something more casual, something they do here called an apéro dînatoire. Now, to me, this has always sounded like a lot more work than just having people for dinner. And my husband Philippe and Jean-Jacques have assured me that here in France, this is so much easier because you can buy most everything already pre-made. In fact, we're gonna try to do this whole party with things that we can buy at the grocery store with only making one or two things. We shall see, wish us luck. <laughs> so to help me pull this little soiree off, Jean-Jacques was coming to come shopping with me. He said he knew all the stores that we would be able to get all of this stuff pre-made easily, inexpensively, and quickly. And one of these stores is a place called Picard, which you almost have to see to believe. Bonjour. When you walk into this store, you don't see shelves. All you see are freezers lining the aisles, and it has the most incredible collection of gourmet frozen food. Everything from fancy desserts to fancy appetizers, and that's what we were after. All of these little appetizers that would have taken us hours to make can be found here store-bought. I have to admit, I was a little bit skeptical at first, but Jean-Jacques assured me the quality of the card was great and these would be delicious. So I put my faith in him and the card and loaded up the cart. Then we headed next door to this little home store. Jean-Jacques said it's here that we could find little glasses to put our store-bought salads in. So one of the things that's sort of fun about the Apéro Dinatois is that it's supposed to be a meal but served in miniature over many courses. So what we just bought was for the appetizer course, then we would have a little salad course, a meat course, a cheese course, and of course a dessert course. So again, this is starting to feel like a lot of work, but <laughs> I said, you know what? When in Rome, do as the Romans, or when in France, do as the French. Okay, two stores down. We have one more to do. The thing that I love about the shopping center is all the stores are in the same parking lot. <laughs> we put our purchases in the trunk and off we went to Leclerc, which is one of the big grocery stores here. Here we were able to get some nice little cheese cubes for the cheese cores. I found some fresh greens that I was gonna use to decorate some of the charcuterie platters with. We found a great selection of saucisson sec that we would slice up and put into little bowls. An incredible selection of olives. I don't think I've ever seen so many olives in one place at a grocery store. <laughs> this is one of the things I love about shopping in France. Just the variety of food that you can find is just incredible. We grabbed a few packages of charcuterie, thinly sliced and all ready to go. Then we headed off to the pre-made salad aisle. In France, you'll find a lot of these pre-packaged salads that the French typically serve as a first course. And we were gonna transfer these salads into the little glasses we bought for single servings. We were making great progress, crossing everything off the list, and then it was time to venture into the houseware department. We were on the hunt for some mini cannelé molds because Jean-Jacques makes a salty cannelé recipe that he wanted to share with me. So we picked up two of those. This was going to be the one thing that we were going to make. Super. I love the houseware department in the French grocery store. You can find the most beautiful things, like this brioche mold. I keep thinking I'm gonna be making homemade brioche one of these days, but then I head into our local French bakery and there is no need. <laughs> then it was time to check out. Can we all just stop and admire for a minute the amazing organization of Jean-Jacques checkout skills? <laughs> this is crazy. I would have just thrown it all top there, but he has it all organized by product and section, which makes it super easy when it comes time to bag. Because in France, you bag your own groceries while the next person waits for you. So if you're disorganized, it just makes the person behind you a little bit peeved. Okay, we did it. <laughs> okay, at this point I was assured the hardest part of this party was already done. I just have to do a little haul to show you what we got at Pical because it's really amazing, and I'm really hoping they're gonna look like the picture, but I don't know. <laughs> We're gonna find out. First of all, we bought these really fabulous bags. They are freezer bags. I just think they're so good looking, I'm gonna use them for the beach. All right, first of all, I just cracked up when I saw this. I just, you know, is this really gonna look like that with the ketchup, the cheese, and everything? <laughs> Jean Jacques says they're really good, so I said, okay, we'll have cheeseburgers in France on the Cateau Jouillet. Why not? Kids will love those. Then my personal favorite, these mini croissants, ham and cheese. I mean, how good do those look, right? We have to try those. 
Uh, then, okay, these are my dad's favorite. It's too bad they don't have these in the States. Mini gougères au fromage. So mini cheese gougères. I mean, look at that. These are delicious. These only take five minutes. The upgraded uh, pig in a blanket concept. <laughs> Here we go. Mini sausages in puff pastry. Those look pretty good. And this was just too fun to pass up the Tarte Soleil au pesto. Now, normally I make this at home, but it's already done. I had to see what it would taste like. If you wanna know how to make this in the States, I have a super easy recipe. I will link to it below, and you will see how fun they are to make. But we don't have time for making. We're only buying, reheating, and prepping, per my husband's instructions. So, then to balance out everything that is going to have to go in this tiny little oven, which, in fact, you can get two big trays in there, so I'm actually not worried about the oven. This little thing is a microwave that also functions as an oven, so we're gonna need that too. So I figured with two of these, uh, we should be able to heat all of this stuff up. Some of it is also going to be at room temperature. But to balance out everything we have to heat up, we did get some of these. These are the pan surprise, which is basically bread, little sandwiches. All you have to do is defrost it and then serve it at room temperature. I know that Picard does sell quality things, so I, you know, I'm gonna be a believer, but I just am wondering what it's gonna look like when we defrost it. Hopefully good, because it's all we bought. <laughs> Here's another, a trio of mini pan surprise. This is the other thing with the Apero Dinatois. You do things really mini, so everybody just has a little bite. In fact, for dessert, we ordered 40 mini pastries from my local bakery here. So. We're gonna see what that looks like, but it's basically mini eclairs, mini tarts. I think it'll be beautiful. And here in France, they're so fabulous, there's no need to make. <laughs> okay, it's kind of a miracle, but it all fits in here. This is one of the reasons why we did invest in American style refrigerator and freezer for parties. <laughs> I have my little assistant here, ready to help. <laughs> We are laying out all the ingredients for Jean-Jacques, who is going to be coming soon to make his famous salty canale. Now, this is a recipe we found online and I will link to it below, but he makes them for parties and he says they are really delicious, but you have to serve them cold, so we're gonna make them ahead of time. So we were gonna make two types of canale, one with chorizo and the other with lardons, which is kind of like a thick bacon. But first you have to cook the lardons ahead of time. So I was on that task. And then meanwhile, Jean-Jacques was chopping up the chorizo. The canales went really quickly. All you basically do is make a base that looks very similar to like a crepe base. Then we separated the batter and put the two different meats in and then popped them in the oven to bake. Okay, we have it at 210 degrees and it's gonna go for about 35 minutes. We'll see. Then I love how nothing in France ever goes to waste. So we had a little bit of extra batter that wasn't gonna fit in the mold. So Jean-Jacques put them in the Madeleine pan and we were gonna have them as a snack during lunch. Well, we were lucky enough to have a beautiful day. So that's the good news. And this part of France, you never know. It could be beautiful or it could be raining. So today we have the chance that it is beautiful, which is also good for the fireworks. So now I'm gonna decide how this party is going to play out. So I figured I would just put the buffet on the table here. now. This, according to my husband, has to be no fuss. So I'm really trying to use restraint and make this no fuss. But if you know me, I like a good fuss, but okay, I'm not gonna fuss. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to put a tablecloth on the table. We're gonna put the food in the center and then at either end, we're gonna put, I guess, glasses in a bar. We thought that could maybe work so that people can access it from both sides of the table. Yeah. Um, but I need to do something with these chairs because if we're gonna have a buffet here, that might be kind of hard to get to the food with these chairs in the way. So we'll figure that part out. And then we have a little cocktail area over here that we usually use when people come. It's fun, they come through the door and then people are here gathered having drinks. Have to move these lounge chairs. Then Philippe just went to go get some ice. So he normally likes to fill this whole planter up with ice. And then we put bottles uh, of wine and champagne and things that need to be chilled. So I have these beautiful beach towels that they call futas. They're quite large. So I was gonna cover the table with these. I also just like that they're blue and white. I know my husband said there are no decorations for Bastille Day. I was sort of laughing just knowing how much we love our decorations for the 4th of July. <laughs> he said there are no decorations for this event. I said, okay, we'll just use blue and white tablecloths. And then for flower arrangements, I might just use these grape leaves. These are really gorgeous and they stay in water for several days. They don't wilt. This has been the fun thing to come each year. We see how this grapevine is doing. 
ideally the grapevine is going to cover this whole pergola one day, uh, but it's not quite there yet. So it's been fun to come back each year and see how it's doing. And there are little grapes that are coming. Okay, the cannelets are out of the oven. They are cooling. I'm gonna let them sit here and set up uh, before I try to remove one. So these are gonna be served during the appetizer portion of this soiree. Oh, the desserts are here. Okay, what do you think? Ta-da, oh my, <laughs> look at those. Those are fantastic. Okay, what did they do? They did little uh, macaron choux, <laughs> tart. That is amazing. And it's the same thing underneath. Yeah. Those are beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Mission accomplished. We got the desserts. I am so surprised that all of this is fitting in here. <laughs> this is great. Okay. The canales have cooled. They look delicious. Um, Jean-Jacques has gone home and he trusted me with the cooking, but I do have a question and I'm wondering if it's the mold. So they look really nicely browned on the front end of things, but then when I lift them up, you see, they look a little bit underdone on the top. I think that's because of the silicone mold. I mean, just in my experience making the sweet ones, and if you wanna see my video, I will link to it below. I have never had success with these silicone molds, but it's all we had, and he swears by them for the salty ones. I don't know, we will see. It's really hard to not just pop this in my mouth, but I'm gonna be good, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna wait for Jean-Jacques. Then the next thing we can do is prepare the salads because I wanna put them all in the little glasses and have them all ready to go and then put them back in here. But see, this is taking way too much space. I don't know if this happens in your house, but in my house, it's always a battle between the drinks and the food. And my husband would take this whole refrigerator and fill it with drinks and then nobody has anything to eat. I'm just gonna put them in this little crisper drawer. There we go, perfect. All right, now I'm gonna put this in the fridge in the house because this is gonna be our salad for lunch. There we go. Look at all that room. The really nice thing about this house is that when you have house guests, there's always something for them to do. So there's been a group that's gone off to the Bastille Day Parade. There is a group at the beach and a group bike riding. So that leaves me and my little assistant <laughs> to be able to prep some of the food. Here's what we have to figure out. We have one salad, which is Jean-Jacques' favorite. It is this Alaskan seafood salad. I wasn't so sure about this, but he really had his heart set on it, so we got that. <laughs> then we have some carrots, grated carrots, which I think are always good. Two containers of that. And then we have some beets in like a vinaigrette that we're gonna use. We have two containers of this. And then, this is also good, this little celery roumelade. Okay, Orly, this is my idea, to take all of these little glasses, and we have 24 of them, put them on here, right? So then all we have to do is take the platter out and put it on the table when it's ready. Yeah. But, you know what I think we should do? What? Make sure that this fits in the fridge. <laughs> Let's go check. It's always a good idea, if you are gonna be using serving platters and putting them in your fridge, to make sure that they are actually going to fit in the fridge. I do the same thing with my oven just to make sure it's going to fit in the oven and see, look at this. Is this perfect or what? Okay, so we have this whole platter for salads. I think this fridge organization is always a process of organizing and reorganizing. What I think I'm gonna do, because we don't serve the desserts till later, is I'm gonna put these little canales here and see that is gonna give me a whole shelf that we can use for the cheese platter or the charcuterie platter. All right, let's do it. It's too bad we don't have any herbs. I think some little tarragon would be great, but again, this is no fuss. Papa said no fuss. No, but I feel like it just needs like a little top. I know. But then you feel like it's kind of blend up. I know. You know well, you know what? We'll have our little forks. That's okay. Okay, while my daughter was finishing up on the salads, I was going to start on the cheese course. I am going to cheat a little bit <laughs> with mother nature, <laughs> but she won't care cannot resist these gorgeous grapevines because I think these are going to be great on my cheese tray. So what we're gonna do, because I bought some gorgeous grapes, I am just gonna pretend <laughs> these came from here. Yeah, let's just see. All right, and I've put the grapes on top of the grape leaves here, which I think is going to make a very pretty centerpiece. And then we're gonna add all of these little cheese cubes on the side. Now, here is the thing to think about, Orly. What do you think? I have some little, this is what's so great in France. You can buy these as small cubes. We have little cubes of chev, which is great. 
I think this must be like a Gruyere cheese. This looks great, Orly. And then at the last minute, we will put our little forks inside. I may not want to put the forks now because I'm afraid it might like taste like metal yeah, if we leave it there. Okay. okay. And then we also have some blue cheese as cubes. So we could either just put all of the cubes around, but then we have to have toothpicks and things. Or maybe we just make little cheese brochettes. And that way people can come, they get a little bit of each cheese and all they have to do is take it. Can I open it? Yeah, go. <laughs> go for it. All right, let's make our cheese brochettes. So first we added a few decorations in the form of some dried fruit on either side of our grapes. Then we started to thread the brochettes, starting with the Gruyere cheese and then proceeding on to the chev and then the blue cheese and the boursin. Basically starting with the firmest cheese and ending up with the softest cheese. This prevents having to thread the softest cheese all the way down the skewer, which then begins to crumble and makes a bit of a mess as we learned the hard way. And then my curiosity was getting the better of me, or maybe it was my anxiety. I wanted to actually see what these pants surprise were gonna look like. Put it on here because it, we have to actually let it thaw. But let's not open it because then we're not gonna waste another piece of foil since it already comes in its packaging. It's a loaf of bread that has been cut into and little sandwiches have been made. And when it's all thawed out, it's gonna look like this. And then you just serve it like that and everybody comes up and takes their little sandwich. I have no idea what it's gonna taste like, but it looks pretty good, it looks pretty legit. Done, let's put it in the fridge. There, okay, we may need another board for all of this, but at least they're all unpackaged and there'll be a lot of people here ready to help. So that way we can just say, grab the sandwich board and I'll know what to do. Right. I think we should wait on the charcuterie platter because I don't really have a place to put it. So for now, it's gonna go here and we'll just throw that on a board at the last minute because I need this area for my cheese platter. Which I must say came out really beautiful looking. I actually might try this idea back in the States. It's such an easy way to serve cheese and fruit and a few nuts. And then instead of having to slice off a piece of each of the cheese, you actually get it all right here in your little brochette. One more thing done. Now, I know this might be a little bit extra, but I find so much of the secret of entertaining is organization. So I wanted to drag out all the platters and boards that I had and see which thing was gonna go on which plate. And Orly even made little notes um, to let people know. <laughs> so that way, when my sister and brother-in-law and lots of friends and family start to arrive and they wanna help, they know what to grab. It just lessens the chaos and allows for everything to flow a lot more smoothly. Okay, it's the end of the day and guests will be here probably in about an hour or two. The problem is the weather in this part of France can change on a dime. So it was beautiful today. It was like the perfect beach day, but now it's looking a little cloudy. Look at that. The thing that I love about this house is it's so easy to go from outdoor party to indoor party in a flash. Because you see, while we're setting everything up for an outdoor party, with the table here, if it starts to rain, which it could, then we just pick everything up and we throw it on this table. This is the other great thing about having a large space in here is that we have all of the platters and we could just easily put it all right here on the table. Everybody could sit here in the sofa and everybody would be comfy. Oh. <laughs> yes, what are you ironing? Is this your outfit? No. <laughs> Getting some housework I, I done. I did your pants. Oh, thank you. That's very nice. Yes, I think I'll put those on. Then I used these antique linens to line the trays for the glasses. And then I rearranged the platters just to put them in the order in which they were going to be used. So first up with the appetizers, then the meat course, the salads, all the way down to the dessert. All right, well, I'm going to hope for the best and I'm going to set it up outside until otherwise noted. Okay. I know I'm kind of asking for it with these hurricanes, but I don't have any more votive candles and I have a ton of these taper candles. <laughs> Isn't that what they're for, these hurricanes, to like guard against the wind? So we shall see. I just think it's always nice with a little bit of candlelight. We do have these though. I have this little thing we can plug in. These are always fun. Anything that illuminates, I just think adds a lot more warmth to your party, whether that be candles, little fairy lights, or something that's plugged in like this. It just adds a little twinkle that makes things festive. 
All right, we were about 30 minutes away from guests arriving, so it was time to start prepping some of this food. My sister-in-law luckily was there to help me. So I started to take these big platters and put the mash in the center. This is just this really beautiful um, green that I thought would just add a little bit more life to these charcuterie platters. I was gonna drizzle it with a vinaigrette, so if somebody wanted a little salad on the side, they could also have some of that. But once I put the charcuterie out, it just really came to life and looked really pretty. So I was gonna pop these in the fridge just until people arrived. Then we set out the bowls of pistachios and olives, put some picks in a little glass in the center of the olives. And then we put the cannelés on a plate. They still looked a little bit underdone to me, so we just flipped them over and no one would notice. <laughs> they still were gonna taste great. And then of course, I just decided full steam ahead. I was putting everything outside. Sometimes you just have to will things into being. Okay. So we had the glasses. We're gonna put all of the food in the uh, center of the table. With that, we have our little shell for our napkins. The wind is kicking up. <laughs> For glasses, we have the alcohol. We are now going to take the ice and the wine and fill up our little container here. In the meantime, I'm gonna put in these appetizers now because what I figured out is some of them take 20 minutes. So we're gonna get those going first and then we can just serve them at room temperature. All right, I am putting a lot of faith in you, Picard. <laughs> I've never done a whole cocktail party of frozen food. I'm hoping this is going to be good. Well, if not, I will live and learn. <laughs> the only slight issue is I didn't have any more parchment paper, so I had to put everything down on foil uh, because I was afraid it might stick. So we'll see how that works out. Oh. Then it was time to check on the bartenders. Yes, that's a good idea. I like how you did that. I was serving some rosé. Yes from uh, Cuvée Triano. Ah. Some beer, okay. Cuvée Philippe, uh, very <laughs> French, six. We're having uh, for the US. Yes, well yeah. there are those people who like their whiskey and, and uh, Some champagne, Grand Cru. Okay, a little mm. white wine, What's, which one is that? The white one, yes, it, this one is from my friend Guy too, is a oh, chalet. Yes. okay. This selection, you know. Looks good. We're gonna need an ice bucket. And I am so glad I found this last year. And look how cute it is. It's an ice bucket and it has a little spoon <laughs> for the ice. It's so cute. It's All right, I'm bringing that out. Yeah. Maybe a carafe for the Eureka. It was a little hard to remove the appetizers from the foil, so I wouldn't really recommend this. <laughs> Parchment paper is always better, but I guess it worked in a pinch. Guests were starting to arrive and the bartenders were in full swing serving drinks, but nobody was really coming to the table to take any of the food. So I was trying to figure out what I should do in this regard. Let it sit there and hope for the best or start to pass it. So I did have my daughter swing into action and start to take some of the platters <laughs> to see if we could get people to start to eat some of the food because I had even more food to bring out. All right, it is time to bring the sandwiches. This whole party is very interesting. I am not sure that this is easier. <laughs> I think this is more work. I don't know. Let's see. I just think everybody should come for dinner. It'd be easier. Okay, the cold sandwiches were out and now it was time to heat up some of the hot sandwiches that we bought at Picard. Okay, these are the ones that I was most curious about. The little hamburgers. I don't know. I mean, they do look like the picture. Here they are with the cheese and ketchup. And here they are with the cheese and the ketchup. This is hilarious. Okay, we are going to put these in the oven and see what they're like. I have to say, I'm pretty impressed by the quality of this frozen food. Look at this. These are little croissants that have ham and cheese in them. These look delicious. Picard, you need to come to the United States. I think you would give Trader Joe's a run for their money. And you know me, I love a good Trader Joe's, but man, look at these mini croissants. They are just adorbs. I think these mini burgers are done. They smell really good, actually. <laughs> I have to admit. But go ahead, it's a hamburger. Is it hot? It's a little hot, but go ahead. Let's see. It even has the ketchup. <laughs> oh, actually really good, though. They're bite-sized. Mmm. 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 These are good. Okay, these ham and cheese croissants look pretty legit. I feel like I need to sample each thing before I bring them out to people. I just wanna make sure this is good. Croissants, they just came out of the oven, they're a little hot. Mmm. Mmm. 
This is crazy. I never thought I would have a dinner party with all this frozen food, but these are really fantastic. Bravo, Madame Picard. Nobody's really eating anything. I don't know what to do. <laughs> See, I feel like when you have a dinner, people sit down and they eat, but they're not coming to the table. All right, I think I need to make an announcement. <laughs> I think this is a very interesting psychological thing about cocktail parties is people start chatting, they get into their little groups, and nobody wants to be rude to run off to grab a plate of food. So they're kind of stuck there. So my feeling is in these situations, you need to grab those platters and pass them. And that's exactly what we did, and it did help. Okay, Orly, let's get the desserts. It's time, babe. I, I love the desserts. Wait, I don't burgers. think we need both boxes. The way the people are not eating anything. Wait, let's what, put so out one box. Are we just going to have a box of desserts? We might just be stuck with a box of desserts. That for, sounds like heaven. I know, for tomorrow lunch. But grab one box and we'll put it on a platter. Okay, let's go. I'm going to... Then I was not taking any chances with these desserts. There was no way I could be left with two boxes of these fantastic pastries. So Orly swung back into action with the passing. <laughs> and it really did help. This one? What is Wait this? till you open it. All right, let's see Trust me, you're going to like it. And then, of course, I had to slow down long enough to be able to try one myself. And these were fantastic. Chocolate cream puff never disappoints. <laughs> well, so far, so good. Everybody seems to have eaten enough. It is still daylight out, and it is 10 o'clock at night. I cannot believe <laughs> how light it is. We have to wait until 11 o'clock for the fireworks because it's just too light. I hope I can stay up. This is our third summer in this house, and the first two summers I missed the fireworks because I just couldn't stay up that late. But this year, I promised myself and my daughter I wasn't going to miss I it. I can't believe how light it is, and it's almost 11 o'clock. Yeah. We're ready for the fireworks. <laughs> it was a good thing we got there early because the whole town had come out to this little beach to watch the fireworks. Yeah. It was pretty amazing to just be part of this new community and see so many families out having fun together, getting ready to celebrate the big national it was so awesome to be sitting there on the beach watching this spectacular firework display. We had the most perfect seats as they were setting them off right from the jetty. It really was such an incredible experience, one that I've never had in Los Angeles before, which you're usually stuck with huge crowds and parking nightmares. This thing, we just walked down to the beach and saw this incredible show. Happy birthday! <laughs>